Hi folks, welcome back to Math with Captain Rod. The topic of this video is hyperbolas and how to graph them. And what we're going to be doing is looking at examples that are specifically centered at the origin. In general, hyper, uh, hyperbolas do not have to be centered at the origin, but um, the ones we're going to look at are, and the examples we're going to be looking at are on page, where did it go, 485. So for starters, let's talk about what equations for hyperbolas look like. I wrote them down over on the right hand side and you notice I said them, there's two of them because there's really two types of hyperbolas. Some of them will open horizontally, they'll look kind of like this. They're kind of like a pair of quadratics kind of reflecting one another and I said kind of, they're not parabolic shapes perfectly but that's kind of what they look like. Some of them open vertically like this. And now, the first thing you have to decide when you're graphing them is which one of these you're looking at. Are we looking at a horizontal uh, opening hyperbola or a vertical? And I'll teach you in the video how to do that here in uh, just a few minutes. Another important thing about hyperbolas is that they have uh, asymptotes. And in order to graph them, you really need to find what those asymptotes are. And I'll go ahead and, and I'll explain that in the video here uh, in how to, how to find them and how to use it as a graphing aid here in a little bit. And they have vertices. The vertices of this guy are here and here. The vertices of this guy are here and here. So again, important things for hyperbolas. You have to decide, you know, is it one that opens like this, this, you know? Is it a, I'll just say this, is it a horizontal or a vertical opening uh, hyperbola? That's one decision you have to make. Two, what are the coordinates of the vertex? And actually there's, you know, multiple vertexes. And then three, how do you get the asymptotes? And that's what I'm hoping to teach you uh, in this video here, these three things, and then how to sketch them. So let's get going. All right, so we're, we're going to do this just by example here. We're going to take a look at number six on page 485. And that example is x squared over 49 minus y squared over 9 is equal to 1. Now, <clears throat> First of all, let's talk about how, you know, which way does it open? This is how I remember this stuff, okay? I, I've got CRS, I can't remember squat, so I always have to kind of rely on figuring things out kind of as I go. Notice here that if we put x equal to zero, the resulting equation has no solution because that's the resulting equation, right? You're, you're gonna end up with y squared equals uh, negative nine. That means that the parabola, you know, x equals zero is not acceptable. This parabola has, I'm sorry, hyperbola has to open this way because there is no solution for x equals zero. So I know we're looking at a horizontal looking parabola or a hyperbola here. I gotta quit saying parabola. I've been dealing with parabolas a lot lately and now we're dealing with hyperbolas. All right, so we know this thing opens horizontally. Now we're gonna talk about uh, finding the vertex here. So the thing opens horizontally. So the way we find the vertex is very, very simple. Um, because it opens horizontally, it's gonna look something like this. And you'll notice that the vertex is on the y-axis. So we're just gonna set y equal to zero and solve the resulting equation for x. We're gonna have x squared over 49 is equal to one. So x squared is equal to 49. So x is equal to plus or minus seven. So that's enough now to actually start my sketch. Uh, seven, zero, I'm just gonna move that over to here. Minus seven, zero. So that's the point. Seven, oh, minus seven, oh. All right, now this hyperbola must, the graph of it must look something like this. Now you'll notice, um, I also said that these things have what are called asymptotes. Right? And here's how you find those. Now, here's what the asymptotes are. If you think about for very large values of x, the graph of this thing will start approaching the asymptote. And you can find it by just basically lopping off the one here. Now I know it, that might seem a little strange, but when you look at this equation here, when, x, when the x and y's get very, very large uh, down the road, um, this equation basically, um, what do I want to put this, is approximately equal to this. 
x squared over 49 minus y squared over 9 is equal to 0. If I move this over to the right, this is going to read x squared over 49 is equal to y squared over 9. And I'm going to solve this for y. So let's see, y squared is going to equal 9 over 49 times x squared. And if we square root both sides now, we're going to get y equals plus or minus 3 sevenths x. So what I have here now is the equation for a pair of lines that go through the origin. One of these equations is y equals 3 sevenths x. The other equation is y equals minus 3 sevenths x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph these equations before I graph the parabola. And I'm just going to do kind of a rough sketch. So 3 sevenths here. Uh, y equals 3 sevenths. Let's see. That means like rise over run is 3 sevenths. If I had actual points here, an actual grid, what I would do is I would, um, let's see, go over 7, up 3, and put a point. Okay. So imagine I did that. Over, over 7, up 3, put a dot. So this is the equation for this asymptote. I'm going to go ahead and do this in green. Now the other one here is y equals minus 3 sevenths. So again, these things go through the origin. And if y equals minus 3 sevenths, that means if I go right 7 and down 3, there's another point. So imagine going right 7, down 3. In theory, if I had a, a better, you know, like graph paper in front of me, these points would go exactly where they need to go. All right. So this is a graph of y equals 3 sevenths x. The other one is a graph of y equals minus 3 sevenths x. Now, these are asymptotes. And what that means is that this parabola, when x gets large, the, I'm sorry, the hyperbola has to approach the asymptote. So this will look like, oops, something like this. Same thing down here, oops, over here and over here. Oops, so oh, that's a crummy one. It's very difficult to get these sketched on the screen I'm using. There we go, approach the asymptote. So you see, it does kind of look like a pair of parabolas, but the one thing I want to point out is that parabolas do not have these asymptotes here. So hyperbolas are not like that. They just don't, you know, they don't really have the same shape as a parabola, but they do kind of at a glance look like a pair of parabolas. All right, so there is a sketch of the hyperbola that is described by this equation. Again, first important thing, tell what you have to be able to tell whether it opens left, right, or up, down. What I always do is kind of investigate like which one is positive. Set that to zero. This one won't have a solution to it. That'll tell you whether it opens up or down, or whether it's an up, down, or a right, left. And, and again, for example here, this has no solution for x equals zero. That means it has to be horizontal. If it did have a solution for x equals 0, that means it would be opening vertically, something like this. Uh, next, finding the asymptotes. You basically just ignore the 1, set it to 0, solve for y. You're going to get two lines out of it. Sketch them. Then you get the vertex. In this case, we would get we got the vertex by setting, let's see here, um, y equal to 0, solving for x. If the thing were vertical, we'd be setting the other one to zero and solving for y. Once you have the vertices here and here and the asymptotes, then it's just a matter of sketching it, just like I just did. All right, so I hope this video helps demonstrate how to uh, sketch graphs of asymptotes, or I'm sorry, of hyperbolas. Have a great day.